Okay, let's get going. Uh, today's Sunday. I went to church this morning, and uh, I made comments last week about uh, surprisingly hearing the the pastor bring up my hearing is bad and everything. Hearing him say, yeah, from the altar, Barack Obama. I said, my God, what's what's he talking about Barack and all? If, if, you might, if you've seen that video, you might recall. But uh, today, and it was a good sermon, and the people clapped at the end. And uh, today, uh, the pastor come out, he had the, he had the mass, and he come out all bent over bent over in a U. And I said, Matt, wow, what's the matter? Just barely walking his back, give out. And the way he was walking, you had concern that he was even going to make it up to the, to the altar. And um, when it come time for, to say the gospel, he come down off the Walter to the podium and really struggling, bent over and all, and collapsed on the floor, down. And everybody was, you know, not that many people in a church early, early mass and, and all. And uh, he struggled through the whole thing. They picked him up a couple, uh, the men managed to pick him, the women made their little. Sh little shriek like you know and uh, men a couple men picked him up and and everything and he finished the man and he's a man and he's a big he's a big man and well and uh, anyway the the end of it uh, my thoughts is boy oh he's at the end when he he the blessing and everything I couldn't hear him he, he leaned he's leaning on the altar and he's talking so quietly I couldn't hear it. I had to ask somebody what they say, and the people clapped at the end again. And uh, I w had to ask the guy behind me, an older man, what did he say? I didn't hear him, you know. And he says uh, he's ill, he's, uh, and uh, I guess he's going to be replaced with a new pastor. So anyway, my thoughts about it, uh, about the priests and all, and all the commotion and. Catholic Church and everything. Uh, the good ones that just got a rap, bad rap. They're getting a bad rap. There's a lot of with my, oh, 98 percent good men, and a few bad apples. Would presume they were just a few. Thank God it's only a few or what. But so that's where we're at with that. And we'll end that. Anyway, I'm going to run a clip here now that really is, really is something. When you see this and watch this thing, I'll run a clip and then I'll get back to you and we'll kick it around. Okay, this is going to be a, a good one. My name is John McNaughton. For a long time, I didn't know if I wanted to paint this picture because I worried that it might be too controversial. But as an American, I knew I couldn't be still. I had to do something. I wondered if the presidents of the past could speak to us today, what would they say? Our country has gone through a lot of changes in the last 223 years. Some things for the better and some for the worse. How would the presidents of the past feel about the uncontrolled spending and overwhelming expansion of government which is occurring today? This man represents every man, woman, and child who is an American. And like you and me, he hopes for a better life to find the American dream of happiness and prosperity. But now, because of unconstitutional acts, imposed upon the American people by our government, 
we stand on the precipice of disaster. The painting symbolically suggests the actions of Barack Obama as well as other presidents. Yes, their actions speak louder than words, as do the brushstrokes in my painting. Mr. President, you took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. Okay. I don't know, it seems to me like... Uh, no one's implying, neither the man that one made this wonderful uh, video and painting. It's it's on YouTube. Um, implying, nor I, that um, Barack Obama is completely the cause of, of where we're at. That's not so. It goes back, goes back a long ways. The problem. But uh, he didn't help. He's not helping. Don't seem like he's helping. I don't know. All the greed and everything, and greed and big word. When you get in office, uh, not to serve the people and everything, you take an oath to, to do the best you can and everything. But uh, I went to s my hometown, Serval, yesterday and picked up this book. That uh, a young man had, had written. And re I practically almost read that thing yesterday, but my eyes, bad, jeez. Hard to think about it. After a few hours, it was really tough. But uh, here, here's the thing: Cerval, maybe even not an ordinary town, but we were lucky. We had a lot of industry in Cerval, and uh, as you ride, you, you, I, mean, I would go and I would see it before this. Was it just yesterday that I'd seen it coming on? But all the industry is gone. Dupont's. That was a big, big employer. A lot of people worked at Dupont's. And uh, what happened? Uh, they made the film for, for uh, pictures and stuff. Video and 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 your pictures. Then digital come along. It's wonderful. Digital is wonderful. Film is finished. The film plant finished. So Dupont's is still there, but it's nowhere near the same. Hercules finished. Hercules is gone. It isn't even there anymore. National lead. Cerebral was known as the home, the motto was the home of national known industries. And uh, National lead paint company. National lead. You don't even have to say much more about that. National lead. Gone. Yeah, Quigley's. I worked. My father worked there. I worked there. For about a dozen years. 
uh, Quigley's uh, products for the steel industry, asbestos in it. All these uh, lawsuits and all over asbestos, I guess that asbestos is bad, but I was around it. And nothing ever happened to me. I don't know. Well, maybe the asbestos was bad, but that's not what caused Quigley's to, to be finished. Quigley's, Quigley's was a was a job. It was good. Play. I was electrician. I was I was good, but it was dirty and dirty place to work, you know. But it was a job uh, for the steel industry. They made the there used to be the United States Steel Hour and that great big bucket of molten steel they would pour it. Well, that lip on that bucket it would wear off, you know, molten fire. The program United States Steel Hour would come on with and show you that. Well, that lip on that bucket, you know, we made a product, pulverized this ore and made a product that they would spray on that, onto that. You know, start buying like, automobiles all from Japan and everything. And uh, all our uh, companies making the cars, the Ford plant on Highway 1, gone. There was a plant in, in uh, Linden, gone. We all bought the Japanese. And uh, and then the steel mills. You didn't need the steel mills. Gone. That's where we're at. The opportunities that you could get a job. When I was young, you could get a job. Now, they're not there. Those opportunities are there, and they're saying, create jobs. Where are the jobs? Where are they going to come out of the ground, pop up like mushrooms or something? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then we owe all this money. Maybe, and I'm not a defeatist, not by a long shot. And I, and I believe in this country, and I think we'll... We, had, we can rebound, but a lot of things got to be done differently. You can't, you can't have all that greed, get in office and think nothing of, but, but for yourself and what you can get. It won't work. It's, it's been going on for too long. It will not be able to continue. So. Just an old man's thoughts. But to me, it's scary. It's scary. Again, it's the battle of good and evil. Constant battle. Okay. Not very pleasant. Not very pleasant thoughts. And then we should be, our government should be giving it away, you know, I don't think so, I think we have to pull back and reevaluate, reevaluate with everything, with the people that we have in there, bring the country back, and the people that are in there back to their senses, that's what's got to happen, and if it don't, I don't know.